Kaufman, but it, it, it's um, it's very curious that he, that his method of doing the time wave zero stuff actually, outside of the novelty and whatever else he called it, static or something for the regular language, uh, it does seem to reconcile to the release and the building tension very appropriately, I think. And so in that sense, that isn't good, because anything reinforcing these ideas within our work is... Um, uh, it, it means the universe is putting more substance behind it, and it makes it that much scarier. Okay. Thanks for the call, 888 Lots of calls. It's pouring in, so if you get a busy signal, just hang up and try again. Here's an email for Cliff. Thanks for having Cliff on the show. Very important information. If Israel strikes Iran and uranium is caught up in the jet stream, hmm, what should we do in the U.S. to protect ourselves? Should we quarantine ourselves with our pets in an enclosed area with food, water, and supplies? If so, for what period of time should we take this precaution? That's a a curious thing that I've not heard about, this idea of uranium in the jet stream. Here's here's the scenario. Basically, the language would suggest that the Israelis attack Iran, uh, first and second level of targets are somehow not able to be gotten at. They use some kind of a bunker buster on a tertiary level of target, a third level of target, which turns out to have some kind of a, of a, a nuclear component, and we think is somehow like over an oil field or something. And so the description we get is a, basically of a volcano on fire, very much on the order of uh, like the um, oil wells that were on fire that Saddam had set at the end mm. of the Gulf War One. right? It took them weeks to put those things out. And we think that something like this could occur in which uranium is vaporized, injected into an oil field, and the whole thing then erupts into flame, which pollutes the jet stream for uh, nine passes around the planet, or approximately 18 weeks. Now, if that is the case, if that actually occurs, even if it's plutonium, you have a very finite window that you have to deal with here in the United States or anywhere on the planet. And what is necessary to do, and and from my uh, training at the War College and um, old Cold War era, I know that this is how the, you really need to proceed with it. You can you can stay healthy. You need to uh, filter your air coming into your house because you don't want to breathe it. You don't want to ingest this stuff in any way, shape, or form. It'll be okay to, to take a portion of your yard or front porch or something and use that as the area that you wash everything down. So anything coming into the house gets washed down. Shoes are taken off and left outside the house after they're washed. And any clothes you can leave outside and use just for going in and out work well. So in other words, have a pair of coveralls that you wash down each time. Let them sit out and dry if that's feasible. Then for animals, you may have to restrict their, because of the fur and so on, you may have to restrict their activities and, and even maybe use um, you know your bathtub as their, uh, their bathroom for a while for the first few days of the fallout. But its, it's half-life is about two weeks. So if you can get through the first two weeks of it without ingesting it and so forth, you're probably okay. If, on the other hand, it's something like cesium-131 or 133, those are the kind of things where children need to be given the um, potassium iodine tablets just to, so that they end up having uh, their, sure. uh, you know, being radiation-proof. People like my age, it just doesn't matter because all you're really doing is working against cancer, not in any kind of an immediate death. But basically, you can survive fallout if we're dealing with this as is described, which is in the most extreme form in the language, it's only a finite issue. It only hangs around for the nine passes of the jet stream, so about 18 weeks or so. Uh, it'll be horrific, but uh, it is manageable if you you know keep your wits about you. And we're recommending uh, over the years about two to three drops of the Lugol's uh, potassium iodide every day anyway, and that's a nice one to have around. Lugol's iodine. Triple eight six six three sixty three eighty six. Here's an email. Uh, I want to ask Cliff if the event around October twenty fifth could that be a false flag? It could, but it, again, our thinking on that is that if that is the case, it, it uh, is going to be another one of these things where the powers that be have, you know, the Patriot Act all ready to go, all thousand pages of it. No one ever read the thing, and everybody signs it. You know, seven days after. Uh, 9-11 kind of an attack. So if it were a false flag, then really the 10-day period doesn't make a lot of sense unless we're dealing with that tension for 10 days. But the period of time from there on, nonetheless, will still be as chaotic. The false flag in no way was going to redeem the uh, crushed uh, financial system. It's still going to collapse. We're still going to have the international chaos and so on. Uh, It'll just be under a slightly different flavor. And at the moment, 
we have to say that that reality at this stage seems to be putting wor- uh, um, uh, substance behind our words about the Israeli attack. So every day I see more and more flags, if you will, that that's going to happen. And so it doesn't look so much like a false flag attack as it does the Israelis going crazy over Iran. Mm-hmm. And if we use the model of what we've seen happen over the last year in the media and what they let out about Israel, it's almost the same model that we see working with this whole swine flu thing. I mean, it's like... Very controlled. Exactly. Very controlled. Like it's, it was a done you can use. Yeah, it was like yeah. a done deal six months ago. Yes, that's quite correct. And this is the scary part, of course, is because the powers that be, though that is to say the, those 27 or 28 layers above the president and the security clearance, mm-hmm. all of these individuals have a stated goal of reducing the level of the population and, and organizing everything under basically this feudal system with themselves at the top. And why should we not take them at their word that they're willing to do this? So this eugenics kind of big idea, brand name eugenics, you really, your linguistics in that, it's it's real. Correct. I mean, it's just not uh, con- collapsitarian, uh, urban rumor kind of stuff. Correct. Triple eight six six three sixty three eighty six. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Oh, my name is Michael. I'm calling from Colorado. Go ahead. You're on the air. Ah, uh, thank you for taking my call. Mm-hmm. I just have a couple of ideas I'd like to toss out for Mister High. Um, if you read the um, Gnostic Bibles, there's a section in the Apocalypse of Peter, and it said, and basically it's to summarize it. It basically it says some people are born with an eternal energy essence, and some people are not. And I'm kind of of the mind that the powers that be were born without an essence, but they learned to vampire it off the human race. I was wondering what Mr. High thought about that. Mm. Interesting thought. Mm. That would have a tendency to go along with the idea that the um, gray alien, or that basically humans are are interesting or, or special in general because we have an emotional life that other beings do not. And you see frequently references to the grays, even going all the way back to the Nag Hammadi about... Um, how the greys are basically emotional vampires, and they they take emotions and make energy out of it. So that's a curious thought. I had never really considered it quite that way, but um, it could indeed be that. that. Uh, You have to understand, I mean, when you have contacts with a lot of the people that work at the minion class, I acknowledge to myself that these individuals are not as other ordinary humans. And I'm not saying that, for instance, everybody in the CIA is this way, but once you get up to a certain level within the CIA, there is a an attitude that is expressed in almost all the cells that would have a tendency to support that, that they're dealing with somebody that is in some way fundamentally sucking the life right out of them. Mm-hmm. And there's many people that argue, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and Cliff, that, that this whole idea of if you make someone fearful of what you're doing, that that is the that's the element or the paradigm that works to get juice from from people. In yeah, other words, yeah. if they're afraid of you, then you are actually giving them juice or blood or whatever you want to call it. Prime sure, sure. you provide power to them. It's it's very sure. evident. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think so. it seems to work like that. Yeah, and fear is an interesting emotion. I mean, it's so primal. It's uh, probably one of the most uh, that drives everybody. It's one of the highest levels of intensity emotions that we have, and it's so hard for individuals to control. But it's very much like uh, willpower. You don't have willpower until you exercise it. The very first time you exercise it, you have all the willpower you'll ever need in your life. And with fear, as long as fear dominates you, you're under control of it. But the very first time you learn to con- overcome that fear, it, it is your your uh, servant from that point on and it never ever need dominate you and it's just rather curious you know the first time you find yourself in a situation that you think should scare you out of your wits and you behave well well thereafter it's like oh okay the next one won't be so bad and I can I know I'll come through that as well and at the same time the fear is still there but it, it then becomes your energy here is an email Cliff it's a pleasure communicating with you I think you deserve some some noble reishi mushroom. <laughs> we'll <laughs> cool, send, we'll cool, send yeah. him some. Just wanted to ask you about the ill winds from your first Shape of Things to Come report. Anything new? Thanks, and uh, the universe bless you. 
The ill winds thing, we always work in an archetype, so we work at these larger uh, themes and move down, and the ill winds thing is still on. It gained a great deal of strength over this last uh, processing run. We still are of the opinion that it'll be equally split between some form of nastiness as a subset of the Israelis attacking Iran and the swine flu thing going around the planet. The swine flu business um, doesn't appear to be really a nasty, fatal, ugly disease until January, February, and that time period. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna get ugly in the early 2010. Correct. Uh. The the there will indeed be mutations because basically what's going to happen is this: they're going to hand out live virus, they're going to shove it into millions of people. At some in some of those people, it's going to combine with other viral elements that are already in existence in those bodies, and it's going to be respirated out. And that's going to be a rather nasty mutant version of it. And so we will have a nasty version of swine flu, or whatever, H1N1. Uh, But uh, you're going to be at much more risk if you get involved with the vaccine than than not. And if you're not going to get involved, or even if you are going to take the vaccine, either way, boost your immune system with vitamin D and take vitamin supplements and get as healthy as you can through those period of time, because that's the point of the low level of sun in the northern hemisphere which corresponds with immune response weakness well there's a bunch of nurses up in new york that are refusing to take the swine flu and i think they're going to be fired and then massachusetts is very close to doing a mandatory vaccination do you think there's going to be other no no let's be clear about that they're They're very very clear about passing the language to do a mandatory one but it yet remains to be seen whether the powers that be in the control elements within that area have the ability to enforce it uh-huh. uh, for instance i've gotten a lot of people send me things now i have a certain amount of, of visibility and anyway i got some uh, information from counties in north carolina where they're so broke that in order to do a, a quote mandatory or even a voluntary vaccine they have to ask for voluntary help unpaid for, from uh, nurses and other staff. So you know that their ability to do any kind of an enforced vaccination issue is going to be way reduced. And the fear is running around now that we're going to have the military come to your door and say, you know, take this shot or we're going to shoot you with a gun, that kind of thing. Are very uh, The fear is very high, but the, the foundation for that doesn't really exist. We don't have enough military it's spread around the planet. If we hauled back every person in the, our military and even all the clerks and everybody and gave them all guns, there still wouldn't be enough people to of, enforce of this in a timely fashion. Yeah, of course. And uh, so I guess then, uh, what about the linguistics on the whole um, constitutionality of a lot of different things? Is, is, is this going to come uh, to light? Uh, yeah, but it'll be as a result of uh, us um, sorting through everything after the revolution. Oh, after the post-revolution. Yeah, yeah. Right, at this point, it looks as though the revolution is pretty much a done deal. The pressures are going to be so great on the mass of people in the U.S. Uh, over January, February, March of next year. And bear in mind, we're already seeing the first early stages of reactive, violent kind of activity. Uh, you know, with that poor fellow that got hung the other day with Fed scrawled on him. It doesn't matter who did it or whatever. Just the language itself is is telling. And um, that kind of activity is going to escalate. And the poverty level that we're going to be plunged into here as the dollar dies cannot be minimized. There are going to be um, uh, horrific levels of dislocation in the U.S. as our primary product, which is the dollar and these screwy financial instruments, are rejected. All of a sudden, we're going to be one of the poorest countries on the planet. Here's an email, and it's kind of lengthy, but it's all about codex, this idea that involved with the... uh, um, uh, um, uh, powers that be and the World Health Organization and the United Nations that uh, they can't stop.